a member of the Texas Instruments E2E forum has just released a new example that shows how you can use the TCP IP stack on the Hercules family. It's a very neat example. You can ping the board, but you can also HTTP or FTP to it. It comes with a full source code, so we can load the program in Code Composer Studio, put a breakpoint, for instance, in the ping command. We can then shoot the ping from our operating system and see how the code stops and how the board replies to that ping. Silart Lovas of the E2E forum has created the example and he has done a great job. If you're just interested to know how Free Artos works, this is already a great example because he's using the Free Artos in the perfect way. He uses the queues, he uses the tasks, he uses everything as it's supposed to work and it's a great, great learning resource. But also it's an example full of functionality. He has implemented FTP and HTTP, so it's possible to upload an HTML file to your launchpad and then use your browser to view that file. And to support all of that, he implemented a RAM disk. When you upload a file via FTP, that's stored on that RAM disk. And then when you serve to the board, the TCP IP port will go to that RAM disk and serve the files that are stored there. To get the example, simply download it from the E2E forum. There's a zip file that you can save on your local disk and then in Code Composer Studio you can import the zip. Nothing else to do, this just works. I will put a link to the forum topic in my comments. And before we show the FTP and HTTP examples, let's just have a look at the simple ping. I have already loaded the example in my Code Composer Studio. So let's start the debugger. I've put a breakpoint on the position where we get a ping request. Let's now execute our program, start the command prompt, shoot the ping, and our code should stop. So that worked. Our code stopped when we received the ping, and you can see that my ping is timed out because the program is not running. If I would remove the breakpoint here and uh, resume the program, fire a new ping, you'll see that it just replies. So this proves that we have our TCP IP stack running and that the board is replying. Next thing we'll do is look at that FTP part and that HTTP part. And we'll start with FTP. Let's clean the terminal and try to connect to our board via the FTP protocol. And ignore the errors that you see because it doesn't implement the full FTP commands. You don't need to provide a user or a password, we're just anonymous. And then we can launch a directory to see what's happening here. We have a directory RAM here, and that's the RAM disk that holds our HTTP file. So if I move to RAM and do a new directory, you see a web folder. And that web folder contains the default files of the free RTOS web example. So if we now go to our browser and surf to our launchpad, we get that default web page. If I would load different files to that RAM disk via the FTP tool, I would get a different homepage here. This may not be the most flashy demo, but if you look at the source code, there is loads of things to learn just by executing this example and see how FTP, RAM disk and HTTP work together. And let's get a little bit more low level now and connect to the serial monitor of this example. I'm using putty and let's see what commands we have. There is loads of goodies here. We can do a PS that shows how our processor is performing. There is a PS command that shows details of the free RTOS status. And an interesting one is the Emacs stats, what I'm going to run now. You can also ask a directory listing. Go to the RAM disk, do a list of the files there, and check the log file. This one shows the die temperature of your microcontroller sampled every minute. There is a number of things happening there. Have a look at the example, have a look at the source. There is loads of things to learn. You'll learn how free Artos works together with the Hercules microcontroller. There is a low level TCP IP implementation that you can step through. Free Artos is using FATFS to create a RAM disk. Data is written to the RAM disk. A whole lot of things are happening there and you can step through all of them. So it's really worth downloading that example debugging through it, stepping through it, and learning what's happening behind the scenes.